Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. A special welcome to our online viewers. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Please stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Let us turn to our gathering song number 618, Guide Me Ever, Great Redeemer. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I'm going to speak the Kyrie this morning. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, and for all who offer their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. And let us turn to the canticle of praise. Let us pray. O oh God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us and this world in all its need with the life that comes only from you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. And it doesn't look like we have any children this morning, so I will call on our reader. Good morning. Our first reading... <clears throat> is from Exodus 16. A food crisis becomes a faith crisis for the Israelites in the wilderness. The hungry people forget God's saving work in the Exodus, and they wish for the food they had in Egypt. Nevertheless, God miraculously meets their needs with manna for bread and quail for meat. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. And in that way I will test them whether they will follow my instructions or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord for he has heard you complaining. And as Aaron spoke, the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I in the Lord your God. In the evening, the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as the frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? for they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Our psalm reading is from Psalm 78, 23. So God commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. God provided for them food enough. The Lord caused the east wind to blow from the heavens and Raining down flesh upon them like dust and flying birds like the sand of the seas. So the people ate and were filled, for God gave them what they craved. Our second reading is from Ephesians chapter 4. Christians share fundamental unity and diversity. Our unity consists in one body, one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God. I do, our diversity is expressed in various forms of ministry, whose goal is equipping the saints and building up Christ's one body. Therefore, the prisoner in the Lord beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way unto him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus, <clears throat> Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, 
but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, for it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him who he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it was my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. Let's take a look at what the teenage boys at my house call the backstory to today's gospel reading. Today's gospel reading describes the day after Jesus had fed 5,000 people with a couple of fish and five loaves of bread, with leftovers, I might add. When he did this, the people in the crowd said, surely he is the prophet that we've been expecting. A good sign, right? They are accepting Jesus as the prophet. After he performed this miracle, he left the crowd and went into the hills to isolate himself, leaving the disciples to wait for him. When it got dark, the disciples decided not to wait any longer and got into a boat and headed across the lake. Then the wind came up, causing the water to get rough. The disciples were really scared. The gospel says they were terrified. Then they looked up and they see Jesus walking on water. Bear in mind, they're three or four miles from the shore that they had left. He's walking towards them and saying, do not be afraid, I am here. They let Jesus in the boat, and suddenly the boat was on the next shore. Amazing. The next day, the crowd from the day before, plus additional people who had heard about the miracle, began looking for Jesus. They knew the disciples had taken the only boat, so they were not sure where Jesus was. They then went across the lake to look for him. This brings us to the end of the backstory and to today's gospel reading. When they found Jesus on the other side of the lake, they asked him when he got there. His response doesn't really answer that question. He tells them, you came looking for me because you're physically hungry. You want more of what I provided for you yesterday, but folks, you're missing the point. He wants them to stop worrying about their physical hunger and the food that will perish and look for the food that will feed their souls and give them eternal life. He tells them, spend your energy seeking eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. He's saying, I am here. God sent me. And what is the people's response? What do we have to do to serve God? And Jesus tells them, it's simple. Believe in the one that he has sent. In other words, believe in me. That's it. Believe that Jesus was sent by God to give them eternal life. Simple enough, right? Well, evidently, that seemed too, be, too good to be true. Remember, these people came from a long line of ancestors who worshiped gods that they felt needed to be bought, that they expected sacrifices. And here's this man saying, just believe, that's it. Just believe in me. This reminds me of the times when you see an ad that promises something for nothing and you think, prove it. And that's exactly what the people responded to Jesus' incredibly good offer of eternal life. Prove it. Prove it, Jesus. 
Why don't you send us some of that manna that Moses gave our ancestors? Really? They had just witnessed 5,000 people being fed. Was that not enough proof? No, nope, they're asking for more. And this is far from the first time that we find in the scripture where people are asking for proof. In Matthew chapter 12, in the story of Jonah, we find the following verse. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees told Jesus, Teacher, we want a sign from you. And in Mark chapter 8 and Matthew chapter 16, it says the Pharisees came to Jesus and asked him to do a miracle to show that he was from God. Way back in Corinthians chapter 1, it says, For indeed the Jews ask for signs. And Psalm 78 reports, they willingly challenged God. Yes, challenged God by asking for food to satisfy their appetite. Again and again, we ask for proof. My, we're slow learners. Instead, we should pay attention to Luke chapter 4, where it says, you are not to put the Lord your God to the test. In this morning's reading from Exodus, we heard about the incident that the crowd is referring to, where the Israelites were hungry and complaining and asking for proof. And the Lord said to Moses, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. By paying attention to the reading and how people now speak and how Jesus had interpreted it, they believed that Moses had provided them with the food when Moses was simply the messenger. And Jesus corrects them, very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it was my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. I think this last part says two things. It corrects their belief that Moses provided the nourishment when it was God that provided it. And once again, he's saying to the people, pay attention, listen to what I'm saying. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven, the bread that does not spoil, the bread of eternal life. He's telling them, for the bread of God is which comes down from heaven. He's referring to himself here, telling them, God sent me from heaven to bring the bread of eternal life the bread that gives life to the world. Then they say, sir, give us this bread always. So you think at this point, maybe they're beginning to understand. Do they know what Jesus is saying? Or are they still focused on physical nourishment? Then Jesus further clarifies by saying, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. A couple things stood out to me in this last verse. First thing, Jesus states the first of the seven I am metaphors or statements in the book of John. I am the bread of life. Other I am statements include I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and I am the true vine. In today's reading, he's using bread as the metaphor to say that the bread that nourishes you on earth is temporary. It spoils. But the nourishment I can give you is what you need for eternal life, and all you have to do is believe that I am the Son of God. The second thing that stood out to me was, whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. We've heard this somewhere else. In John chapter 4, we learn the story of Jesus speaking to the Samaritan woman by the well. He was comparing earthly water to living water. It was here that he revealed himself as the Messiah. The third thing that stood out to me was the fact that, yes, the followers were receiving earthly things, whether it be bread or meat or water. But were they focusing on the gift rather than the giver? Did they thank the giver of these blessings? 
Do we continue to ask for more and not acknowledge God's gifts in our lives? Are we so preoccupied with our earthly needs that we forget to give God the glory for which he has provided us? Do our prayers include thanks, or are they prayers asking for more? Recently, I came across an acronym that can be used to guide us in prayer. It is ACTS, X, and here's what it stands for. A is for adoration. When we pray, are we expressing our deep love and respect for God? Think of the Lord's Prayer. It begins and ends with adoration. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Meaning God is holy, sacred, and revered. Words of praise. The Lord's Prayer ends with adoration. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. We acknowledge that God has all power and recognize and praise him for his glory. Look at the words and readings from psalms or songs we sing in worship. They're often words of praise and adoration to God. I did not hear any words of adoration from the people in today's reading. C is for confession. We know we are sinners. Are we admitting to our sins and asking for forgiveness? Once again, we can turn to the Lord's Prayer. And forgive us our trespasses if we forgive those who trespass against us. Some versions say, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Either way, we're acknowledging and confessing our sins and asking for forgiveness. T for Thanksgiving. In the story of 5,000 fed by two fish and five loaves of bread, there is no mention of praise to God for this miracle that filled their stomachs. Though they did recognize it was a miracle and made them think that perhaps Jesus was the prophet they'd been waiting for, yet no word of thanks. Are we thanking God for all we have and for all that he has given us? Too often we credit ourselves for our accomplishments and our belongings, failing to recognize that we could achieve nothing without the strengths and gifts that God has given us. In today's reading from Psalms, it talks about all the gifts God provided. Was God thanked? In 1 Thessalonians, it reads, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. Thanks for all circumstances, the good and the bad, which is not always easy. Be thankful. Express your gratitude to our generous God. And the last one, S. S is for supplication, which is the act of asking for something. Are we asking for the right blessings from God, or are we asking for earthly blessings? Are we asking for our body to be nourished, or our souls? Is it okay to ask for things for ourselves? I always feel a little guilty when asking for things for myself. It occurred to me that maybe this is because I'm asking for earthly things and not spiritual things. But maybe if I focus on asking for spiritual things, I won't feel guilty. Even in the Lord's Prayer, we are asking for things. Give us this day our daily bread. Let's take a closer look at that line. I always interpreted that as, let me live another day and have food. And I think it's okay to ask for those things if we're asking for them in order to serve God and others. But let's look at the line with the lens of today's lesson of spiritual bread, not physical bread. Let us remember, it is not the manna we are offered, but the bread of life, the gift received through Jesus. Now there's probably not a right or wrong way to pray or to be thankful. But let us learn from this group of 5,000 that while physical bread is wonderful, it's not the end goal. Let us be grateful for Jesus and our eternal bread. Amen. Please stand as you are able for our hymn of the day, number 515.
Please join me in affirming our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. O oh, wise one, your wisdom has been present in this world since its beginning. Pour out your wisdom into the hearts of the whole church, especially the newly baptized, lay leaders, deacons, pastors, and bishops. Merciful God, holy God of all creation, you are the source of all life. Where the sun blazes hard and strong, bring a gentle breeze. In the places experiencing the cold of winter, bring your warmth. Merciful God, compassionate God, help government leaders of this world unite for peace and justice. Humble all who hold authority that power is directed toward a more just society. Merciful God. Bread of life from heaven you feed us. Fill all who hunger with needed nutrition and open our hearts to eliminate hunger in this world. May we see a day when all are fed. Merciful God. A wisdom of truth, help us to understand your will for the church. Be with congregations experiencing transition, redevelopment, and the exciting yet frightening path of newness. May your wisdom be found at every step. Merciful God. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please take this time to greet one another. You may be seated at this time, we'll collect our offering.
For yours is the glory through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let's turn to our sending to hymn number 536. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Just a few announcements. Today is the music festival and sweet corn feed from 4 to 7. I'll also be leading kids outdoor games from 5 to 6 p.m. After the service on August 25th, it would be much appreciated that anybody that can stay, stay and help clean up the yard and do some miscellaneous cleanup around the church. On Saturday, September 7th, the men will meet for their prayer breakfast at 7.30 a.m. in the fellowship hall. All men are welcome to come. September 15th is also Rally Sunday, and after the service on September 15th, there will be a stewardship meeting in the fellowship hall please consider attending and joining in that conversation. And then our Castaway Fall Youth Retreat is September 20th through 22nd. If you know any 
Um, sixth through ninth grader, please let have them come and speak to me. The cost is $200, but if um, money is an issue, we want to make sure they're still able to attend. That is it for all of the announcements. Go in peace. Share the good news.